So let's uh, move on uh, to let's move on to sort of the going against the C70 and and what I will say about the C70 is this is that they're what I feel like with both of these cameras is that they're going to be equal footing. So in regards to the C70, uh, I'm sorry, the FX6. It's a full frame sensor compared to the dual native ISO. Uh, I mean, it's a full frame. I'm sorry, it's a full frame sensor with dual native ISO. So I personally think the FX6 is going to be a better low light camera because of, if it was just a full frame, I don't know. I think they would be on par because the C70 has super. Even though it's super 35, it has that DGO technology, which it gives it really, really clean noise. But the dual native ISO is what especially at, as high as that second gain circuit is, the native, native ISO being 12,800, that sort of changes where, that to me sort of changes, like pushes the FX6. Again, I don't know because I, I, I haven't had either camera, but if I had to take a guess, just based on physics and based on how, you know, based on what I understand with sensor technology, the FX6 will more likely be the better low light camera. Um, it's going to have a variable ND filter compared to the C70's analog filter. Um, and for most part, that's going to give an advantage. Now, again, you got to remember, you're still talking about electronics. So if the electronics were to ever go, you're kind of SOL. But I've only heard like maybe that happened like one or twice with all the different Sony cameras that have came out. Um, I've only had heard of that issue happening like once or twice, so it's very unlikely that that would be the case. And besides, you still have an analog ND filter if in that case. Um, and then, but the me, the thing that's going to be sort of the deciding factor for both of these cameras is going to be the RF mount. I meant the mount system, or and your lens. The lenses are going to basically, for me at least, they're going to dictate where you're going to, where people are going to move to. If you're, if you're committed and got Sony glass, then you are probably going to go with the FX6. It just totally makes sense. Their whole ecosystem works around that E-mount system. They got a whole different thing. So if you're, and that's, and that's the thing I've always credited to Sony. It's like, and you've heard me talk about this multiple, multiple times. If, uh, Sony, what Sony did so well with their with their mount system is that they started from where you can go from the beginning with their crop sensor camera all the way up to their full frame uh, flagship cinema camera. You can go all the way up that whole the the whole uh, ecosystem and get the and use the same mount so you can use the same glass. So the the savings you make over time, at least in terms of glass. As you transition your way up in your filming career, it's the most sense. The only drawback is that you really have to be liking the ecosystem that Sony has built, because unfortunately, nobody has really adopted what I considered a good solid alternative with the E-mount system. I know Confinity has an E-mount option, but it's completely, it's just like, it's metal. It's just a metal mount. There's no electronics, so there's no way to talk for lenses to talk to one another. So, a good so your so any sort of dual IS with lens stabilization and IBIS talking that's out the window. Autofocus definitely out the window. So, so it so that's one of the big things for me at least is that there's no way for the for it, lens and cameras to talk except unless you are in the Sony ecosystem. Whereas with Canon, um, even if you are going with their RF mount system, there are alt other people that are adapting that mount system. Red, I mean, look at Red. Red has the, the, the Komodo out right now, and the Komodo is now essentially using the RF mount systems, which allows them to also put it in D filters as well. So you got cameras that can, t that uh, even though I think the Komodo right now still can't talk to RF lenses natively, which again is weird, but people are adapting. And you still got the EF mount, which is the most popular mount system where no matter, where 
there's there's alternatives. Like you can go to the Sony mount and still adopt EF mounts, though you can't really take advantage of the autofocus as as you would using a Canon camera. But in terms of EF mounts, you got Red, of course. Ari just announced on their um, Alexa Mini LF that an EF mount option. Uh, you have Confinity, Confinity, Blackmagic, they all offer EF mounts. So if you're investing in, in even if you're investing in EF mount, gla EF glass, you're still getting the full advantage of the EF glass on the RF mount cameras like the C70. So it really comes down to, are you committed to the Sony E-mount system? Or if you want to look elsewhere in terms of glass, if you're not, if you're not committed to that EF glass system, which I also have to say, they're also kind of dated at this point because those a lot of the glass that came out from Sony, they were designed for like 4K, but now everything's pushing with higher resolutions. Um, now the glass are sort of showing their age, but that's fine you, if you especially if you want like softness on your lens on your images. Um, so, and then the final thing is that the C70 is a little bit smaller than the FX6, and it's five hundred dollars less. So honestly, I think there even I think there's going to be people fighting, but honestly, if you have Sony glass, you're gonna get the FX6. I think people that have that have a good long array of Sony glass are gonna get the FX6. If you've got either EF or RF glass, you're gonna go with the C70. Because the ecosystems are built and work with those with those mounts and those cameras. So outside of that, I don't like I said, I think both of these cameras are going to make a killing in the market.